So, you have COVID-19. You may be asking yourself, what does this mean? If you're lucky like Luke, your symptoms will wear off within two weeks and life as you know it will get back to normal. However, not everyone is lucky. With severe cases of COVID-19, due to prolonged immobilization and bed rests, individuals have impaired lung function, muscle weakness, delirium, impaired swallowing and communication alongside several mental health disorders. The illness can get severely complicated by acute respiratory distress syndrome, sepsis and septic shock, or multi-organ failure, which all result in invasive mechanical ventilation and ICUs. Long term, aspects of post-intensive care syndrome persist for months after discharge, resulting in lower exercise capacity, decreased independence in activities of daily living, and decreased health-related quality of life. Rehabilitation needs associated with severe COVID-19 can be exacerbated depending on the age and underlying health conditions of the patient. Let me introduce you to Michael. Michael is a 60-year-old man living with diabetes. Unfortunately, he was recently infected with COVID-19, resulting in severe respiratory distress. His condition becomes so bad that he is admitted into the intensive care unit and intubated. For the next week, Michael is bound to his hospital bed and hooked up to a ventilator as he recovers from the virus. Fortunately for Michael, he recovers from the infection and is ready to begin his rehabilitation. Michael is experiencing difficulty swallowing and trouble speaking from the prolonged intubation. He's also experiencing muscle weakness as a result of being bedridden for many days. To help manage these impacts of COVID-19, Michael's doctor introduces him to the rehabilitation team that will help him on his road to recovery. This team consists of a speech-language pathologist, physiotherapist, and an occupational therapist. Hi Michael, I'm your speech-language pathologist. Speech-language pathologists can assist those with COVID-19 in various ways. First, those who are having difficulty breathing due to COVID may also have trouble swallowing. Difficulty swallowing is also called dysphagia. When patients are actively fighting COVID-19, their body may become malnourished or dehydrated, leading to the use of supplemental nutrition. Today, we will conduct a swallow assessment to assess your ability to swallow. I will start by examining your teeth, lips, jaw, tongue, cheeks, and soft palate. Then I will get you to perform movements such as smacking your lips together or sticking out your jaw and make sounds like coughing or clearing your throat. I will also check for reflexes such as gagging. You will then swallow a series of substances ranging from water to thicker liquids, pureed foods, soft foods, and even regular foods. I will note if you have a problem chewing, swallowing, or breathing. From there on, I can suggest a diet that would be safe based on your swallowing function. In your case, since you were intubated, once we removed the endotracheal tube, laryngeal function was compromised, also impacting your ability to swallow. This is called post-extubation dysphagia and happens in almost half of the patients after extubation. Prolonged intubation may also lead to voice impairments and you may benefit from augmentative and alternative communication. This allows patients to communicate their symptoms and discuss treatments that may be helpful when they are recovering from COVID-19. Hi Michael, I'm your physiotherapist and I'm here to help with your rehabilitation. Physiotherapy has been proven to be a much needed form of rehabilitation when treating COVID-19 patients, both in the acute and post-acute phases. The physical symptoms due to COVID-19 include immobilization, severe muscle weaknesses, reduced joint mobility, and impaired balance and gait, just to name a few. Due to the pandemic, hospital beds are in high demand, so many patients are being discharged quicker than they usually would. Physiotherapy is needed in order to prepare individuals to transition from the acute to post-acute phases while reducing the risk for readmission. To begin, I want to start with a sit-to-stand exercise. Place both of your feet on the floor, shoulder width apart, knees bent to 90 degrees. Cross your arms and slowly rise to a standing position, making sure that your knee doesn't cross your toes. Once standing, gradually sit back down and then repeat. This will improve your balance and slowly build some of the muscles you lost. COVID-19 also brings on pulmonary symptoms, such as impaired lung function, shortness of breath, and trouble excreting respiratory secretions. To treat these symptoms, I will prescribe you some more interventions, starting with some inspiratory muscle training. This will help you build some of the muscles involved in breathing that were weakened during your prolonged intubation. We will monitor your progress and adjust your prescribed exercises accordingly. Hi, Michael. I'm your occupational therapist. I am here to assist you in your rehabilitation from COVID-19 by providing screening, 
and assessment, goal setting, occupational engagement, psychological interventions, discharge planning, and onward referrals with hopes of helping you get back to work or complete tasks in your social life or your leisure life. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a devastating impact, disrupting the global balance of sustainable development and occupations that define the lives of millions of people worldwide. The pandemic and onset of the lockdown globally has not just locked us all up in our homes, but has also confined us and restricted us in carrying out our occupations and daily tasks. Occupational therapists can analyze occupations to safely restart their services to prevent future transmission of COVID-19. Due to our skills for environmental adaptations and modifications and creative solutions, occupational therapists, like me, could potentially implement strategies to improve quality of life while exiting the lockdown. To help you at home during your recovery from COVID-19, I will be modifying your home environment so you can go about daily living in a manner that is safe and comfortable. An example of an adaptation I will be implementing is I will be helping with the installation of ergonomic handles to be used in your shower and on your stairs. As you recover from this respiratory illness, your endurance may be impacted and standing for prolonged bouts or climbing stairs may prove to be difficult. Therefore, the implementation of these handles is critical for maintaining comfort and minimizing the risk of falls or injury. It's been a few months since Michael contracted COVID-19. After months of rehabilitation, he's fully recovered thanks to the wonderful team of therapists and the support of family and friends.